Hello again, I am Blunty. This is OSVR. Specifically, it is OSVR, the HDK2, the Hardware Development Kit 2. Now, if you don't know what OSVR is, it is open source VR, virtual reality. And like the name suggests, it's an effort to create a free and open source sort of ecosystem for software and hardware for virtual reality to sort of you know, make the playing field fair for everybody. It is not just one device. This is one device in this box, which I'm going to unbox in a second there. It's HDK2. Its intended purpose is to give, you know, brands and developers and all that sort of an open system to combine, you know, different frameworks of technologies and hardware and everything. So it's not just one sort of closed system thing like indeed the Oculus VR is or indeed the HTC Vive. Both good devices in their own rights, but they're sort of controlled by one central brand. And if we've learned anything about this kind of hardware, it's that it needs to be open. It needs to be accessible. People need to be able to freely play, experiment, toy with uh, in, a, in a more open way. Otherwise, it's just, you know, if, if, if one or two brands are controlling the direction of VR, fantastic for the brands, not so great for consumers. This in the box here, which I'm going to unbox. I don't normally do unboxings. I have done from time to time, but this just arrived and I'm very excited about it. And I will be doing a full review and breakdown of it. But for right now, I'm going to do some unboxing and talk about sort of what it is. This is the OS VR HDK2, the Hardware Development Kit 2. And this is honestly the first time I've opened this box. So I'm kind of excited. Hardware Development Kit 2. This is not a a retail ready well it is a retail ready device it's you know sort of polished up and and you know anybody can buy it and play with it that's fine but it is not um it's not a sort of pull it out of the box plug and play kind of experience like the HTC Vive can be like PlayStation VR if you're if you're on that sort of side of the ecosystem well basically you need to be a little bit of a geek to make sure that if you run into a problem or you would like to use PlayStation Move controllers or a Microsoft Connect device with it or you know the Leap Motion Plus or something with it you know you can use all different kinds of technology but you do at the moment need to be a bit of a geek to understand that because it does require a bit of manual patching and fiddling with configuration files all that kind of stuff so if what you're after it's just a plug and play experience, then you're going to have to spend the money on HDC Vive. This, as a piece of technology, the HDK2, is about equivalent to the Oculus Rift as far as screen resolution goes, as far as general capabilities go, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but it is, like we keep saying, open source um, and much, much cheaper, by the way, um, which is always interesting. It is backed by industry leaders. Razer, uh, one of the big guys behind pushing this. Intel is also behind it. Who else? I've got the web page up here. Uh, oh, Leap Motion, of course. Gearbox, Cynix, uh, Nod, and a bunch of other companies are behind this, pushing it, sort of hoping to create a, a nice place for VR to be. So this is the headset, obviously. I to, I love the, the, they've had to put cuts all around the side here so it fits on the curved front, which means I can't really peel this off on one lovely big sheet like we like to do with these things. Black Marks, uh, package designers for HDK2. I want to peel this thing off in one big sweep because that is bizarrely pleasant. For geeks like me, I can go over there, clean that up later. So, I have tried this before briefly at E3. Um, in a sort of racing style game whose name I can't remember. I'll put it on screen for you. <laughs> it... Um, it kind of like F-Zero, and it was a little bit disorientating at first because when you're sort of moving that fast <laughs> with this headset, and they didn't have um, the uh, positional tracking uh, set, it was just sort of rotational tracking. Um, and what the, the difference between that is it couldn't tell whether I was moving from side to side. This can do that, it just wasn't set up for that particular demo, so it got uh, a bit dizzy in there. I didn't feel sick or anything, but it got a bit dizzy. So, this is your heart, uh, headset and because it is open source and because this is the development kit it has been designed so you can upgrade bits and pieces in here as upgrades come along so you can switch out the screens you can put different lenses in there if you like you can there are different face plates you can get if you put a uh, there's a special face face plate you can get to put a leap motion on there if you don't know what leap motion is little device kind of like a connect but it goes sort of on your on your in this case on the visor so it can detect your hands but it's much more sophisticated than the basic connect ever was because it detects all your little fingers and you can sort of reach in and pick up things in the in the vr world and it's very very cool um i don't know whether that is particularly retail ready i should actually contact the guys from Leap and see if I can get my hands on one uh, to try out because I've seen some very very cool looking demos where it seems to work just perfectly and amazing but I've seen some other demos where it seems to be like a claw machine in an arcade or something so they're still working on that but once they nail that down it's going to be fantastic so what we have here is the belt box 
so all your cables from your headset are going to run into the belt box here and then some cables coming out for that that saves you from sort of accidentally strangling yourself with the cables if you're turning around and spot and stuff um now as this stands it doesn't do room scale type stuff like the htc vibe does well actually it kind of does because again open source there are ways that people have been doing room scale stuff with this but as it comes out of the box it's much more like the Oculus Rift in that uh, it's a standing or seated experience. Um, does do rotation on tracking and stuff. Uh, there are no controllers that come with this. So, you know, no, no free space controllers. Although again, it can work with those. There are setups you can use with the uh, Kinect, as I mentioned, the PlayStation Move, which I'm going to try and set up uh, for myself because I do have a couple of PlayStation Moves hanging around here. So let's just uh, put the headset right there for now. Let's see what else is in the box. Empty cardboard. Okay. Now, uh, this does work with Steam VR, um, and at the moment, uh, there is a installer, which is not, it's, it's in beta stage, I'm told, so uh, they're working on a way to sort of get it to just, you know, you plug it in, do the installer, and you're up and running, but you may face some situations where you need to do some manual fiddling as well. All right, so they've done the smart thing with their uh, thing here, and they've given me a power supply, which has a bunch of, oh, there we go, got it first time, international adapters on there, so you don't have to bugger about with that kind of stuff. Either way, don't need any of those, because as you may be able to hear for yourself, I'm an Aussie, mate. So pop that over there. So yeah, simple little wall wart power supply. Easy. What else? Uh, this is the IR positional tracking kit. So this is a special camera, an infrared camera, uh, which, like the camera for the uh, Oculus Rift, ah, there we are, um, is for tracking uh, the, the headset. So you put this on your monitor or on a tripod or whatever, depending on what you're doing. Um, that's very, very small, by the way. This is much smaller than the unit I saw at E3, uh, I think. Let me turn. No, no, no. Actually, this is the unit I saw at E3. Very, very small and slim and easily positionable. Actually, you can't quite see that in the overhead camera, can you? I'll hold it up there for you. <laughs> so yeah, very, very, very slim and very, very, very light. It's just a uh, basically IR camera. It comes with a little standard USB cord, so that will be nice and easy to set up. And oh, hey, lovely! They also give you a little tripod, uh, which is almost identical to one of the tripods I use with my cameras quite a lot. And my microphone's quite a lot actually. So yeah, that is a quarter twenty screw. So you can. You can mount this camera to any standard tripod um, connection. It's a what they call a quarter 20 screw for those of you who aren't uh, camera literate. But yeah, that means this camera can be mounted on pretty much any um, tripod you like. A little, I, I might put it on, I've got my little web camera up here at the moment on a sort of boom arm over the desk. I could put it on that one if I wanted to. Anyway, so easy. Let's um, pop that there. Anything else in there? Nope, 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 nope. All right, so the only, ow, that was a loud noise. The only thing left, I think, is, yep, cables. Something, oh, that's lovely. They give you a little dusty blower thingamabob doodler so you can clean your lenses off properly. Nice touch, little blower. And standard cable, uh, seriously, what have we got? That's the uh, power cable right there. And of course, your traditional USB 3.0 and, well, I say traditional. <laughs> Common on many VR units because this is just the simplest way to get the data to and from the headset and the video to and from the headset. HDMI and USB 3.0 all on a cable there. Looks, I'm going to guess, I haven't checked this, that's three meters long-ish. So you may need an extension for that if you do start uh, sort of experimenting with the room scale stuff that uh, sort of people are tinkering with at the moment. But for right now, for a seated or standard experience uh, for, you know, basically do what it does out of the box and you know the uh, same kind of experience as the oculus rift as i keep saying um because i'm just using that for a point of comparison because that's what people are familiar with you say oculus rift people don't know exactly what you're talking about if you're all the, at all interested in vr so ooh, hey that front cover actually attaches with magnets that's cool except for the bottom part what's the bottom part is that screws ah oh, there are there are screws down at the bottom part but there are magnets up the top there so get a little peek inside of the electronics again HDK, Hardware Development Kit. So it is designed for tinkerers and experimenters and sort of geeks like me who don't mind, uh, you know, diving into some uh, configuration files to have a fiddle from time to time. But uh, yeah, this is uh, what I'm most excited about in the PC VR space because obviously an open source VR system is good for all of us. What it means is 
not just Razer will be making these. Anyone can come along. You know, HP can come along and make one of their own. Uh, MSI can come along and make, you know, an MSI branded, you know, uh, headset, v- virtual reality, you know, rig that works on top of the OSVR SDK and, you know, the h- hardware system. We got little focus nubbies down there. They are very, very smooth. That's really nice as well. So, yeah, first impressions of the actual hardware itself. It's built really quite nicely and solidly. It feels great in the head. It's not too heavy. The straps are significant. And uh, everything, you know, I've had this on my head before. I'll put it on now for you. I haven't adjusted or anything, but we'll see how we go. Uh, no, nope, straps are way too t- small for my head at the moment. Because <laughs> i got a big buffer. There we are. A quick preview of what I'm, what I'm going to look at during my uh, review process of this thing. It's very dark in there. <laughs> So I'm going to uh, set this up, plug it all in, and come back to you in... I'm going to give it about two weeks, at least two weeks, before I'm ready to do a full and proper review of this thing. So I really want to soak it in. I want to try a bunch of different experiences. So if you have something in particular you want me to try, please let me know, and I will be trying it. Uh, like I said, I will be trying to set it up with my PlayStation Move controllers as well, although at this stage, again, that's still something people are fiddling with, so it's not perfect yet. I do have a uh, Xbox 360 Connect and uh, the Xbox One connects over here, which is just not connected to my Xbox at all because they kind of abandoned it. So <laughs> there is a special adapter I think you can get for the uh, Xbox One uh, Connect bar thing that will allow me to plug it into the computer back there and uh, do some cool uh, positional... Um, and I think room scale, you can do that with that as well. You can add more than one camera, so you can do sort of really fancy tracking. Again, like I said, it's flexible. It's open. There are a bunch of stuff you can do. There are, there's a you know, big Reddit community of, of nerds and geeks sort of fiddling with this thing and experimenting. And I've seen all kinds of fancy stuff. But out of the box for, for your, for your, <laughs> for your quote-unquote standard geek, um, this is a very exciting thing. Geeks and open source hardware in VR, you know, the, the new exciting sort of frontier of, of, of PC gaming and experiences and, you know, in medical fields and all that kind of stuff. This is very exciting to me. So I'm going to stop rambling now. Hit in my down below area. There's a truck outside starting its engine. Those guys are starting to bang. I've got to go now. <laughs> Hit my down below area. Let me know what you want me to try and experiment and fiddle with and all that kind of stuff in this, in my uh, review process. There will be probably more than one video as I explore different aspects of it. But that is it for now. Thank you very much for watching. I am Blunty and I will catch you next time. Shut up. There, I'm trying to talk to the people.